14th, 1994. That's right. You were in the middle of your contract mm -hmm. uh, with Disney. That's right. You, you did stick it out. I did stick it out. Some wonderful things started to happen in your life. That's Again, right. Again, um, almost fairy tale like. Yes. Enter Anthony. Absolutely, absolutely. I got saved there in Japan at that Billy Graham crusade in Japan, and um, and I, I'm not going to say that it was all beautiful from that point. Honestly, and that's really where the, the next chapter begins is I did have that let down. When, when we get saved, we have those chill bumps and we have the, you know, the goosebumps on the back of our neck and we see God everywhere and every bumper sticker's for us and we see churches on every corner that were there before, but now we see them and our eyes are open mm -hmm. and I felt clean. I don't know how to describe it other than I felt clean on the inside. New beginning. But then my feet hit the ground. And more of what happened was I realized that I'm still the same person with the same thoughts, with the same friends, with the same uh, stuff in life, and that my life didn't instantaneously just fix. Every circumstance didn't turn around immediately. And when the euphoric high went away, I just chalked it up to just another phase. I'd had a million of them. Wow. And so I chalked it up for another phase and began kind of going back and going, you know what, nothing changed in me, look. Now was that? Were you married at that time? At that time, was that's when Anthony entered in my life. Okay. Yes. You were already struggling with mm -hmm. the old man's rubble. The old the song man's rubble. Used to sing. I was new on the inside, but I looked at my life and nothing was new out here, and I was mm -hmm. confused. And I just chalked it up to, you know what, that was just an emotional experience or high. And I didn't know what was required of me now was to get into the Word and to take those old thoughts and to take all of that old junk and literally replace it with the new, the new thoughts, the, the thoughts of God, what God had about me. Instead, I was just kind of chewing on the old junk of what the world thought of me and what I thought of me. See, you believed in Jesus, but you weren't really following after Him. No. Getting to know Him. No. I was looking for a quick fix. Jesus was my next boyfriend. And I know that sounds horrible. I know huh? that sounds awful. It, it probably is helping some but right in, now. But in, my, but in that moment when that euphoric high went away, you know, we have relationships and we lose that love and that passion goes away. And then we just chalk it up to, oh, well, I'll just move on to the next one. And we don't know how to roll up our sleeves and go, I'm going to get this passion back and I'm going to keep it and I'm going to renew my mind and I'm going to stay put until that old stuff gets replaced with what God would want there. And um, I, I didn't do that until Anthony entered into my life. Mm -hmm. Now, Anthony was an evangelist. Yes. Still is. Yes, still is. And uh, with the power team. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Buff would be an understatement. Yeah. And um, eight weeks after meeting mm -hmm. him, mm -hmm. you were married. Yes, that, I was married. That's like a storybook kind of thing. It too. was. It, it was. And if he were sitting next to me, I would still say the same thing. I think after the, euph the euphoric high of Jesus entering into my, my heart, after that euphoric high went away, I was still looking for that next high. Mm -hmm. And then I met this man of God. And he was so comfortable in his own skin and he knew who he was and he had this joy that I could see, but I couldn't put my finger on how to get it myself. So you know what? I think that somewhere in my warped mind, I thought, how much closer do you get to God than actually sleeping with the preacher? So I married oh. him, but you know, and, and so we married and then of course we, we were together, but marrying this man of God was not, it didn't do it for me either. Now I'm just a married basket case. But thankfully he had enough God in him and he had enough understanding of grace and that I was a work in progress. And he was that extender of grace to me. He was that one that even in the midst of marriage, after we said, I do, yes, fairy tale, but after the feet hit the ground again and now I'm married, now let's deal with the realities of this. Marriage is tough. It's not easy. Being a Christian's not easy. Being married to a preacher's not easy. And I was again thinking that it would all just be automatic. I didn't understand that there was effort involved in rolling up my sleeves and, you know, planting my feet, getting grounded in God's Word, and um, making right choices every day. How long did you go as Mrs. Beckham mm. before? Something before that next wake up, uh, and I don't know whether it was Anthony who who was a catalyst here. Mm -hmm. Before you decided together, we need to do some 
deep work here so mm -hmm. that you can be enjoying your your marriage, your mommyhood to come, right. two children, and and uh, being the Lord's full and free. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it, it did. It was years. It was really? a couple of years. You know what happened is I, I married him. Uh, we married so quickly, and I was looking for that quick fix in marriage. And as a result, I did not want him to see who I was. I didn't want him to see. He so knew I had been So you did what you've done for years. You Absolutely. just stuffed it. I stuffed it. I looked away. I told him what I thought that he wanted to know. He looked at me like I was an angel and I wasn't going to tell him any different. I wasn't going to ruin the opportunity to be, you know, to be free because that's what I saw in him was the opportunity to start over and turn over a new leaf. Well, that leaf was turned over and still all the old junk was there. So I just said, no, that's who I am. I'm the angel you think I am. And it wasn't until about a year, year and a half into our marriage where every night that I laid down into that bed next to that man that loved me and I loved him. I did. I didn't know how to love really, but I knew that this was a man that saw more in me than I saw in myself. And I was determined to find it. I just didn't know how. Mm -hmm. And God woke me up one night in the middle of our marriage, you know, middle of the night. We were actually in ministry. See, because even though I was a mess, I still knew the under, I still knew that you have to show up every day. And I did that at Disney. Even though I felt miserable, I still had to step into my shoes and be a princess today. And always smile. Absolutely. Always One extra smile. shot of pixie dust. If that doesn't work, you're out. That's I know right. That. So I did that same thing in marriage and in ministry. And I just put, I put on the face and I was that good preacher's wife, but on the inside miserable. And God woke me up in the middle of the night and said, tell him everything. Wow. And I said, God, if I tell him everything, it's going to ruin everything. It's going to ruin the little bit of marriage that I do have. Uh, the ministry is going to go kaput. You know, there's no way. This is going to open up a whole can of worms that we can't afford to open. He said, tell him everything. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, God had already prepared my husband to hear what he was about to hear. And the answer that I got back in the middle of a dark room, because I didn't turn the lights on for that, I wanted to stay in the dark when I shared with him all about my broken past. And I was desperately hoping that what I would hear at the end of it was something positive. And when I laid it out there, I figured, what do I have to lose? Either I continue to fake it for the rest of my life, or I put it out there and see what's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And what I heard was complete silence and then all of a sudden what broke through that silence was, I love you and I'm so sorry that that happened to you. And then the next thing I got were these big massive arms mm -hmm. of strength that I was able to just lose it into. I, 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 I just fell into those arms and it was my safe place. And I bawled my eyes out and we cried together over all of that junk and we mourned and grieved over all of those things. And in the midst of that, I heard God say, this is how I know you. I know all the junk and I still love you. I still choose you and I've got so much more for you. And it was in that moment that everything turned. It wasn't a quick fix from that point. You didn't need point. professional counseling. No. You just needed that confession. Confession Good brings for the healing. Soul. Yeah. yeah. And thankfully, a wonderful, as you say, wonderful, patient, mm -hmm. loving partner mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. wanted your highest and best and was yeah. committed to see you there. Yeah. Yeah. And then it was a chore even after that. Because at that point, it's all laid on the table. And now it's okay. Now, how do I replace? all of those voices from the past. How do I replace the thoughts in my head? And so that's when he and I began to roll up our sleeves, get to work in the word. And every time I would have a thought that would come up that wasn't a God thought about me, it was my job today to cast that down, to stay focused and grounded in the word. And that's really where you know that next chapter starts where God spoke the words, it's time to get over yourself once and for all. The book. The, the series that uh, many are doing in their churches mm -hmm. right now, Absolutely. teenage and up, mm -hmm. get over yourself. Yeah. Seven principles to get over your past and on with your purpose. I, I think of some of you watching today, there, there's nobody with flesh on. And uh, you know, my husband gave me this for my birthday with, with tickets to something special. Uh, I'm a princess, my father That's right. is the king of kings you know jesus is the real prince charming mm -hmm. and he does have a plan for you and you may like to just 
have a little bit of help moving to that first step and you can do that right now by calling the prayer line that you see on our screen and I'm sure you will feel a hug right through the phone line as one of our prayer partners embraces you, listens to you and helps to get you to that first step of the real you, the new you, the princess that God made and uh, is waiting to blossom into every wonderful possibility. Jennifer, thank you for allowing the Lord to use thank you. the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's right. So that others can be all they were meant to be. Amen. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back.